here are 10 books that I feel are the most undervalued key issue comics that you need to get into your collection before they become way out of your price range. So if you want to know what they are, you'll just have to stick around and have fun. This video is sponsored by PGX Grading Services. Get one free pressing of your choice when you grade 10 with the code We Love Comics Free Press. Link in description. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris, and this is We Love Comics, and I am about to do another top 10 list to help especially new or older collectors learn what books they really need to get in their collections. And the sooner the better, because some of these just have so much potential that one day they will be out of people's price ranges. So, of course, I'm only listing 10 books. There are going to be plenty of others that you may not see in this list. So if you feel there is something that deserves to be in this list, please make sure you put it in the comments section. Also keep in mind, this is my opinion. So, I mean, take it with a grain of salt. And don't forget to wait until the end of the video to see who's today's surprise subscriber shout out. If you want one, all you have to do is be a subscriber. So let's get this show on the road and start with number 10. So we'll go to the least to the best, which is number one. All right, so number 10. This is absolutely a book, in my opinion, I think you need to acquire while you can. And while it is still affordable, this is Avengers issue number eight, which is the first appearance of Kang the Conqueror. This was graded PGX 6.0. Um, this is a character, there's been a lot of rumors that they might potentially be in a future movie. Whether that happens or not, you know, there are plenty of characters that are actually supposed to be in movies and they get cut out. Or it's just a rumor, so keep that in mind. But the best time to buy a book is before information gets out there, or potentially gets out there, because then you can get them for a lot cheaper. So this is a book... That is still quite affordable. I got this graded, paid $133.94. Ungraded, you can get this book for $100 or less pretty easily. Now, of course, I'm talking like mid-range and under. You know, 9.8 is going to cost a couple of thousand. So, you know, I'm trying to keep this in the range of what people can afford. All right, number nine. This is a book I've talked about several times. I've had this in many other videos. This is Silver Surfer issue number three. That is the first appearance of Mephisto. And definitely when I um, had my source give me this information a couple years ago, I bought several copies. Now this particular copy I bought when I was a kid, so I promise you I spent under $10 for this book. But you could pick this book up easily for under $125 mid-grade and probably even lower if you look for some deals but my um informants that gave me some inside information which a lot of it has been right just sometimes it does take a couple of years they told me a while ago that after they get through phase four where there's a lot of space adventures they're going to start doing things like the underworld now the reason they couldn't use him like in Infinity War, because he was a major part of Infinity War, Infinity War in the comics, is because Fox still owned the rights, and as of now, it's not official yet. You know, they still have to cross the T's and dot the I's and get all the, you know, the paperwork done before it is official. So that's going to be at least another year before that happens. So anything can happen. Keep that in mind. But eventually, they're going to get into this kind of underworld kind of shows. I mean, they already showed that in the beginning a little bit from the uh, Thor Ragnarok. So this is a character that may be of some importance down the line. The best time to get a book is when nobody's talking about it. So this is a thicker book. A lot of times you're going to see this side get scrunched. So make sure you find one where you see the binding so you can read the actual words instead of... If you could read these words while this is straight, then that means the book has been crushed. So try and avoid those... Because in these thicker books, that can become an issue as far as grading is concerned. But, I mean, if you get a super deal on it, then don't pass it up. So, that's another key book to keep your eyes on. All right. Next one. <clears throat> I'm actually surprised this one is so affordable. This is Iron Man and the Submariner, issue number one. This is a one-shot comic, but this comic predates both the Submariner number one and the Iron Man number one. So this came out, I think, in either 1967 or 1968. 
So especially with the popularity of Iron Man and the future potential of Submariner maybe being in a movie someday, I mean, who knows? Um, I guess that depends on how good DC does with their Aquaman. This is a, a sleeper pick that most people pass up. I've seen this book graded for under $100. So I've seen ungraded for under 30 Now, this is one that I got when I was younger. So again, I probably spent under $10 for this book. But I have several other copies that I spent between 30 and $50 on. And as you could see, this is probably a 6.0 grade. So no one really gets these. I see them passed up on all the time. So that's a book definitely to consider for your collection. All right. So number seven, this is a book I've talked about so many times. This is a book you got to get. Now, obviously, you can also have the uh, honorable mention for the first full appearance, which is Forever People, issue number one. But this is one of the exceptions to the rule. This is Jimmy Olsen, issue number 134. This is the cameo appearance of Darkseid, or Darkseed, whatever you want to pronounce it. So even though... The other comic I just mentioned, Forever People number one, is the first full appearance. This is the more desirable one. But obviously, I would recommend getting both. So this way, just in case if it ever changed, or you can only afford one or the other, you know, wait for deals. But this is a book you, you don't want to pass up. Because if DC gets themselves back on track, this is absolutely a book that will double and triple in price. You can get this book all day for under $150. I've gotten this book under $120, sometimes under $100. Because as you can see here, this particular one I paid $89.99 for. And this is probably a 5.5 .5 to a 6.0 grade. So pick that one up. And as you can see, I do have both Marvel and DC, even though I mainly collect uh, Marvel. All right, so the next one... I have a bunch of, but I mean, I literally have 30,000 comics and I tried to search for it. I mean, just to go to my storage bin for one comic and search for hours was just not worth it. So I'm going to tell you what the comic is and then I'll pause the video and I'll show you an image of that book. So this way you'll get to see what it, at least what it looks like. But make no mistakes, I have several copies and this is, I think, probably my sleeper pick out of all of them, which is X-Men 221. Now that's the, the most modern book in this list. Now, it's Copper Age, so it's not really modern, but considering most of these are Silver Age, um, that is the first appearance of Mr. Sinister. Now, they gave a little bit of a cameo with the movie in Logan, but it, it, in my opinion, especially once Disney gets the rights to the Fox characters, I mean, they have so many new villains that they can add to their repertoire that Mr. Sinister might be one that they use eventually. And that book, I mean, I've gotten several copies under $25. So I'm going to pause this for a second, and this way you could see what that book looks like. Okay, so that is definitely a book to pick up. You can get that one all day for under $50. Even graded books, you can get it for under 120 and I'm talking like 8.5 to 9.2 range. So, of course, always look for deals, but that one, you know, especially if you can get it raw for cheap, snatch them up. Again, remember, you're taking a chance, so always keep that in mind. All right, next up, this is another book I have recommended before. I have probably four to six copies of this book. This is the Submariner issue number one. Now, as far as the rights are concerned, it's a little bit sketchy on who owns all the rights because there's a debate that goes back all the way to the golden age because this character did originate from the golden age but if you know anything about marvel you know if you and especially disney if you put out enough money you can get things done because remember the hulk is not owned by marvel the only way they got around it is because when they did whatever agreement they did with, I believe, Universal, um, they had a clause that said as long as they didn't do a Hulk solo movie, they would be able to, you know, do a Hulk in there even though they technically don't own the rights. So it's a little confusing with some. I mean, even look at Spider-Man. Marvel does not own the rights to Spider-Man. They're basically borrowing them, borrowing them from Sony. So if they wanted the Submariner, good, you know, bad enough, you put enough money into it, it'll get it done. So there are no guarantees with this book, but 
again, it's a book that you can get relatively cheap. And maybe Marvel's waiting to see what um, DC does with Aquaman to see if it can be done and see if it's successful. You never know because they do. Hollywood does like to copycat itself. We see that all the time. Now, this is a book, again, you can get for under 125 and under. I think all five or six copies I have, I don't think I've ever paid $100. This one, I paid 61 so this one can get faded at times. Now, it's going to be hard to tell because a lot this blue is not supposed to be light blue all over the place. There is supposed to be a little bit of white around there. But make sure there is, especially in this area, is the light blue. Because a lot of times from here down tends to fade. You can always tell if it's faded by the blue in here. See how that's a deeper type of blue? A lot of times that'll fade. That'll kind of give you an indication. But again... Because of the fact, if he's ever used in a movie, you know, most people are not going to be able to afford his Golden Age books because even the ones that are not number ones are very expensive. So this will be the next best thing they'll gravitate to. And the reason I'm not mentioning Fantastic Four issue number four in this list is because that's already an expensive book. So, you know, I'm trying to keep it within the price range, except for the last maybe three books. I want to keep them affordable. So this is definitely a book people will go after. All right, and speaking of the Marine characters, this is issue, this is the fourth on the list. Another DC book. This is Showcase Presents Aquaman and Aqualad, issue number 30. Now, this one's a little different. It's not like, for example, Showcase 8 or Showcase 22, where that's the first Silver Age appearance of The Flash and Green Lantern, because they never technically ended Aquaman. So it just continued onward into the Silver Age. So this is what they consider a test run or a trial of the comic. So it's definitely still a desirable book. Honorable mention also Aquaman number one. But I mean, this book you can easily get for under $150 because people pass it up because they want the Flash and they want the Green Lantern. And, you know, depending on the, how the DC movie does, I mean, Aquaman is about to have a movie. So I think people are kind of, you know, trying to bide their time to see if the movie's good before they jump on it. But if that movie ends up being a really good movie, you know, people are going to gravitate towards this book. And that's when you're going to pay more of a higher price. So I paid $150 for this book. And as you can see, my cat is very excited about this because I guess it has something to do with fish. But it is definitely a book that you can get for under $250 in mid-grade. So if you can find a deal, get that book. All right, so the top three. These are books I've talked about before, but these are definitely undervalued, but they are not going to stay that way. It's just a matter of time now. So number three, my cat's not going to let you see. <laughs> this is Fantastic Four, issue number 49. I got this one, uh, CGC 5.0. I have like three or four copies of this book. I was telling people two years to get this book, two years ago. Now... Most people are going to tell you it's issue number 48, and that is a great book. But the prices are already starting to skyrocket for that book, and eventually it's going to become unreachable. So obviously, if you can afford a book from 48, get it. But, like, for example, I bought two graded books. I have three copies of Fantastic Four 48. Um, one's currently coming, waiting to come back from being graded, and it's probably going to be a 2.5 to a 3.5 range. But I bought two others off of eBay, already graded a 5.0. I paid $325 each for those. Those same 5.0s are now selling for around 800 So people are starting to catch on because of the fact that Disney has acquired or is presently acquiring Fox. It's not official yet until all contracts are signed. So it's probably going to be another year before it's official. But the reason this one's such a sleeper is because of the fact that everybody wants 48. They tend to overlook this one, and it still has importance. Because this book has the second appearance of Silver Surfer. It has the first full appearance of Galactus. And it's the first time either one of those characters was on the cover. Because if you remember issue number 48, neither one of these characters are on the cover. So there is some significance to this book. And again, this book is already starting to rise. People are starting to take notice of this. But you still have time because it's just waiting on Disney to put out the first Fantastic Four movie. And then maybe put out the first Silver Surfer in a movie. And then maybe the first Galactus. Who knows if they do them all at the same time or they spread it out. 
they spread it out, that means it's just another level each time this is going to go up. So this is still reachable, but it's going to disappear as far as price availability very soon. So pick this up while you can. This book I paid $133.59 for. That's not bad, but right now you're probably going to spend $250 to $275 for the same graded book. So my recommendation is try and take your luck on an ungraded book and uh, make sure you look at the book, ask questions from the seller if you have to. But you can still get this book for under 150 in mid to lower grades. So pick this up if you can. You will not be disappointed a couple of years down the line. All right. Number two. This is absolutely a book I've told people to get. This is definitely a undervalued book and just like the one before this is the second option that people are going to start to get to because hulk 181 is starting to get out of price range i mean i'll give you an example just a year and a half ago i ended up getting because my original hulk 181 was stolen i got a uh, pgx 8.0 that i paid 1700 dollars for and i paid 400 for this book so it came out to roughly around 2200 for the two this book right now is selling on average between five and six hundred dollars in this grade. The Hulk 181 at the 8.0 that I paid about seventeen hundred and change for is now selling for around thirty two hundred. And they have not even made an X Men or a Wolverine movie yet. So just imagine how much more popular these books are going to be when that happens. Or shall I say if, because you know, nothing in life is guaranteed at this point. Uh, just because it's 90% done doesn't mean it's 100% done, so keep that in mind. But in my opinion, Hulk 181, if Marvel does it right, I think that book will become what Spider-Man number one is today. It's going to get to the point where, like that 8.0 that I have, once a movie comes out, and it's a good movie, which Marvel has a very good track record of, that book will probably be a six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000 book. So this is what people are going to gravitate to next. So Hulk 180 is the first real appearance of Wolverine, but it's a cameo because he's in the last, you know, the last panel. And there is also an advertisement for this book, I think, in a Daredevil comic. But that's not canon because it's just an advertisement. So don't be fooled by people that say, oh, that's his true first appearance because it's an advertisement. It's not part of a comic. So keep that in mind. I mean, get it if you can get a good deal. But you could still get this book raw for under $350 or so. Remember, I did a video just recently that I think I spent like 180 on a raw book. And um, I think it's probably around a 6.0. So there are still deals to be found. But don't wait too long on this. If you don't pounce on it right away, I mean, obviously, if you don't have the money and, you know, don't, you know, use your rent money or your bill money. But if you have the money to get stuff instead of maybe getting one of the newer variants... Get things like this that are pretty much almost guaranteed to go up. You take a higher risk on the newer books because you don't know if they'll stand the test of time. So absolutely grab this book if you can. Because, because of the fact 181 is going to be out of a lot of people's price ranges, and this is going to be the next best thing. Another honorable mention would be Hulk 182, which is another cameo appearance, but again, early Wolverine. All right, so now we have come down to the number one comic that i highly recommend you get uh, in my opinion i'm really surprised at the prices you could still get this for uh, but before i do don't forget to wait until the end to see who's today's surprise subscriber shout out if you want one just hit subscribe and let me know in the comment section and i'll put you on the list but the number one undervalued book in my opinion is this book right here daredevil issue number one which is the first appearance of daredevil who is now about to have his third season of a very successful Netflix TV show. Now, in my opinion, this is another book that eventually, if they continue that with the, with the TV show, if it continues to be successful and watchable and they do season after season, eventually it's going to really start to gain a lot of popularity. And of course, everybody's going to gravitate towards the first appearance. But if you compare this book to like Amazing Spider-Man number one, well, actually, you'd have to say Amazing Fantasy 15, or the first appearance of Hulk in Incredible Hulk number one, first appearance of Iron Man, the first, that's Tales of Suspense issue number 39, first appearance of uh, Thor, that, which is Journey into Mystery 83. Those books are in the tens of thousands. This book in a 6.0, 
I paid about $810 for this book, ungraded. It's worth about $2,300. That's not bad. Try and get an Amazing Spider-Man number one for $2,300. You probably won't even be able to get a 0 0.5. So to have a very major character, their first appearance, one of the early Silver Age Marvels, at the prices that you can get this for, even if you can get a 0 0.5, this is a book you need to get. Because just imagine if he ends up in a movie. And that's not what out, the, out of the realm of reason, because look what DC does. There are a couple of television characters like The Flash who will be getting their own movies, so it's not impossible. And if he continues to become more and more popular, maybe he shows up in a movie. He may not get his own, but what if he shows up? That's just going to make this book more and more desirable and more and more out of reach. Because remember, you have to go with economics, the whole supply and demand. These books, they no longer print them. And as each year goes by, somebody messes up by sending it in, you know, really bad packaging and it gets destroyed in the mail. There are people who lose them or maybe as they're looking through them and they're putting them in the bag, all of a sudden they pop the staple or they spill coffee on it. Or, you know, uh, somebody's mother throws out somebody's comics. That has happened in the past. So you get less and less of these. So the, so the supply not only doesn't it stay stagnant, it gets lower as the years go on. But the desirability and the demand for them goes up. Now, that naturally will increase the prices. And my cat seems to agree. So this is definitely a book that you want to get before it becomes out of the price range. So the last three especially, these are books that, mark my words, in another five to ten years, these are going to be the prices for what you're paying right now for something like Amazing Spider-Man number one. So it's going to take a couple of years, but don't wait, because the longer you wait, the higher these books are going to get, because people are starting to kind of get into the fact that these books have potential, and they're starting to buy them up. So these are books that you need to acquire into your collection if you can get them. And obviously you can see, especially the first couple of books I showed, they're affordable. You can get them for under $100, some of them even under 50 if you look right. So that's my video. If you like and agree with my list... Thumbs up always shows support. If you want to share it and post it on social networks, that always helps to get my channel out to other people. Uh, hit subscribe if you haven't. Also, don't forget, if there's something you didn't see on this list that you think deserves to be here, just leave it in the comments section and explain why you feel that book has potential because that's just going to help people even more, and that's what we want here. So that's it. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, it's not you. It's not I. It's We Love Comics. And today we're not zooming into the comic. We're having our cat zoom into the camera. Or maybe not. Thank you for watching my video. If you want to connect with me on Facebook, just click right here. If you want to join our cashback program and get $10 off your first purchase of $25 or more, click here. If you want to check out some of my We Love Comics merchandise and support the channel, click here. And then if you aren't subscribed, we'd love you to join by clicking here.